allow me please to go ahead with Q&A and uh, to start with the first question. Uh, it is it is about these governmental support measures. So quite a number of nonprofit organizations take a hard stand against the government, believing that it is the best strategy for them to achieve their goals. On the contrary, your association, the association led by your excellency, decides to adopt a collect collaborative approach towards the Malaysian government. Do you believe that your strategy is more efficient and why? Of course, we, as, you can, as I showed you earlier, we believe in collaborative approach. I guess it's partly because the culture thing in this part of the world is that uh, being collaborative is more effective than being confrontational. So we are not like, you know, uh, some, uh, some group like to be confrontational. And so far, the, of course, it doesn't take overnight. Based on the thing that I showed you earlier, for example, now we are working the government on the national energy policies together with the national oil company. We are also working on the national gas route map. Based on that, we think the approach it is effective. But again, our collaborative approach is not just meeting one to one. We also use uh, social media. We also use the traditional media in order to influence the public and the government on trying to deliver the right message also of the gas industries. Yeah. Yeah, mm. thank you so much. Uh, my next question uh, is about the gas market, ma gas market as a whole. So if uh, the Malaysian Gas Association is going to focus on one thing, one factor uh, as the most crucial one, uh, as the most crucial key success factor for transforming the overall gas market into a sustainable and vibrant one. What would that be? If if yes, what would that be? I think if you give me only one, cho one, one thing to say, I would say the price. So like I said earlier, for example, our price in the regulated market was highly depressed. So we work the government how to increase the price gradually we are successful in doing that in most part of the country, but in one state, it is still regulated with no clear plan. So I think to me, the price is the, the answer for it. One, of course, you achieve the price, you need to work on other things. Yeah, but the most important one is that uh, for government not to interfere in the pricing and let be like, you know, B2B negotiation or discussion. Thank you very much. And uh, one more question. How could Malaysian Gas Association find itself uh, at the international level? Uh, in particular, in terms of investments, which possibly could be done to develop gas infrastructure and uh, I'm assuming market and natural gas industry in other countries. Is it possible? What is your opinion on that? What do you think? And I, I think we have always been active at the international mm -hmm. level. We, I think at least one or few countries are very active at the you know, International Gas Union level. Uh, if I understand that correctly, as far as the investment, as an association, I don't have enough money to invest in, in other countries. But through association like IGU, if you join IGU, you can, I guess, work with us and we can provide experience of some of our members on how do they attract investment or how do they develop investment in the country so that the natural gas in the, in the industry in the country can be very prosperous. And again, we work with the association in order so that we learn what the countries are doing and also at the same time building our, our standing in, ten, in the international communities. By having a good standing in the international communities, we believe that uh, make us able to talk to our government when we have certain standing and credibility at the international level. I hope that answers. Yeah. Uh, yes, which allows me to go to the next question. And it is about infrastructure. Uh, so the gas delivery infrastructure map uh, at your presentation shows that the Malaysia already has extensive gas infrastructure. Will there be a need to further expand the infrastructure in the nearest future? I think moving forward, there, there could be some infrastructure investment, but it has to be backed up by uh, robust economics. But like I said earlier, you know, one good thing about gas industry over these many years, we have developed a lot of good technology. 
And this, this one in particular, where the demand has not been established yet, is the VPS, Virtual Pipeline System, where we move ISO tank, uh, we move LNG or CNG through ISO tank. I think there's something that uh, we are doing now in Peninsular Malaysia, we are doing now in the state of Sabah, where they move a lot of LNG to the eastern part of the countries, where the demand can be established as quite strong, where there is a, a lot of gas source, we can build pipeline the, in the future. But, you know, massive investment like what we had done in the past may be a bit limited moving forward. And now another technology that is good for the country is for the world is the, you know, the ship to ship transfer, all these small scale LNG. Those are the things that is good for, you know, subscale development in, in other parts of the countries. But again, to do all this year, I think it has to be backed up by robust economics. And hopefully by doing that also, it will uh, spur the upstream investment. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm assuming that's going to be my last question for today. Uh, it is more theoretical one. So uh, we can see uh, that uh, Malaysian Gas Association uh, has been quite successful in advocating the position of natural gas in energy mix today and in the future energy mix. And we, ha we can see that there are indeed ambitious plans uh, in front of you. Uh, my question is, how do you think without such institutions as Malaysian Gas Association or, for example, GCF, which is very similar to the association, how would the gas industry look like today? Would it be as successful, uh, as successfully advocated? What is your opinion on this? I think the gas, gas industry in Malaysia will be like an orphan then. There's no, nobody to guide them. So by having an, you know, by joining and having an association like Malaysian Gas Association, I think we can be under one umbrella, you know, speak with one voice and standing, I would say, with respect in front of the politics and influence for the benefit of the gas industry across the value chain. You know, in, in my talk, I always say across the value chain because I don't want it to be too upstream centric, too midstream or too downstream centric. For this thing to stay healthy, it has to be healthy across the value chain, just like, you know, our body has to be healthy everywhere. Yeah. So again, uh, it will be chaotic without uh, a proper association. I think difficult to, to speak to the policymakers. Okay. Thank you, Your Excellency. I'm assuming that uh, everyone who joined this conversation today share your opinion completely. On this note, uh, I thank you once again for being so patient during this Q&A session, and I would like to invite uh, His Excellency GCF, Secretary General, for delivering closing remarks. Your Excellency Yuri Centurion, please, you have the floor now. Uh, thank you ever so much, His Excellency Kasim. It's indeed true that uh, while the private sector uh, may drive uh, innovation, governments uh, may provide incentives, uh, to key stakeholders to accelerate development, commercialization, and production of new technologies. This symbiotic relationship is uh, more important uh, than ever before, especially in the current environment and uncert uh, of uncertainty. The world of natural gas is used to face uncertainties, uh, but manages time and again to thrive. In fact, uh, it's during challenging periods uh, like currently that our ability to respond quickly and efficiently to changing dynamics and market fluctuations becomes uh, uh, even more evident. Uh, building on the example His Excellency Kasim gave on how Malaysia is countering uh, these challenges. I would like to shed some light on the GCF member countries in this regard. Despite uh, the negative consequences of the pandemic, our member countries have been displaying outstanding discipline and resilience in the continued fulfillment of uh, their obligations towards our valuable uh, consumers. Uh, this also demonstrate, uh, demonstrates confidence in the, in the trends of our economies and abilities to absorb major economic crises, notwithstanding numerous challenges and decline in revenues in our member countries. I should point out that the GCF countries are amongst the lowest cost producers globally and are able to weather the current storm or any other, I hope. As joint representatives of 70% of the proven natural gas reserves, 
44% of its marketed production, 52% of pipeline, and 51% of LNG exports across the globe. We understand our responsibility and duty to the world and are committed to strengthen global energy security as reliable suppliers of this important energy source. Of course, I would like to express my personal opinion and I completely share your excellency, your insights in this regard, especially uh, I'm citing you. The natural gas roadmap sets path towards a vibrant and sustainable gas industry by ensuring security of supply, healthy demand, spurring investments, and positioning gas to address energy dilemma. As well as, uh, of course, uh, I would like to express uh, my hails and appraisals uh, to Malaysian Gas Association. As you mentioned, that as a lead advocate, Malaysian Gas Association will continue to play a proactive and collaborative role to support realized national aspirations. Perhaps uh, this is why, and of course also due to the inherent positive attributes and credentials of natural gas, just uh, this week the European Commission classified natural gas as sustainable in its uh, first green taxonomy list of energy sources. Uh, this is a completely commendable step and sign. More countries and societies and experts are waking up to the realization that as we reach the end of the pandemic, the world will need a sustainable and reliable energy partner that can help prevent environmental degradation, ensure stable and uninterrupted supply of energy, and bring affordable and reliable energy for all in compliance with the Sustainable Development Goals. So natural gas is natural partner. I would like to express uh, my sincere appreciation for all of you who joined us today and for your attention. Please accept my sincere wishes for a great rest of the Ramadan and particularly to His Excellency Kasim, a very hearty Raya Eid al-Fitri at the end of the holy month. God bless you, be safe and healthy. Until the next time. Thank you, Ramadan Mubarak. Yes, thank you very much, Excellencies. And on this note, our event is uh, practically over. I would like to once again extend sincere appreciation to our guest speaker, His Excellency Kasi, Malaysian Gas Association President, distinguished representatives of GCF member countries and observer members, esteemed members of diplomatic corp accredited to Doha. Our friends and colleagues, we are very proud and grateful you managed to find time to join us today. Thank you for your interest and I hope that today's insightful performance has only encouraged it further. In this light, allow me to invite you right now to the next edition of our awareness campaign scheduled on May 3rd, literally in a week, when we will focus on innovations and science. I would even say most promising energy ideas to watch. Uh, we will disseminate respective invitations shortly. In the meantime, I would like to invite you to keep an eye on our website, follow our social media accounts to learn about updates. Stay tuned and let us know your feedback. Hope to have you with us soon again. Please keep well and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.